Do you have a pop seam in your favorite shirt or pants where the thread has been broken but the material is still in good shape? This video will show you how to fix a damaged seam even if you don't have a lot of sewing experience. First, clean up the damaged area. If there's any fraying or loose threads, cut them off with a pair of sharp scissors. I'm going to demonstrate two ways to sew an open seam closed. The first way works best if you have access to the wrong side of the seam. Flip the area wrong side out. Line up and pin the raw edges of the fabric, either with straight pins or clips. Put a matching color thread on a hand needle, giving yourself about a four inch tail past the eye of the needle. At the end of the longest part of the thread, tie a knot. I want to connect my stitch from this side of the damaged area to this side of the damaged area, and I'm going to be doing a running stitch. I want the stitch to be as straight as possible from this side to this side, so I drew a pencil line just to give myself a guideline. Now I'm using a contrasting thread color, but this is just so it's easier for you to see. Obviously you wanna use a matching one. We'll be doing a running stitch, and the first stitch is I'm going down into my material, but I'm not going right where the damage starts, but a little ways inward. This will hopefully keep it from getting more damaged if we start a little ways in. So I'll pull this through, make sure to pull through slowly so you don't create any knots for yourself. I came down first and now I'm going up on the reverse about a quarter of an inch away from, from where my knot is. Quarter of an inch or smaller. You want your stitches to be on the small side because it'll be a more secure repair. If I do a large stitch like this, then you're still gonna end up with gaps. So it's better to do smaller. So I came up, go down, and you're just gonna be going up and down, up and down. So I went down, now let's go up. And I'll show you a little bit of an easier way to do the same stitch. So now I would go down, but instead of doing that, I'll go down just so I'm going through both layers, but then I'll just slide my needle over to come back up again. So this is just a, a little bit of an easier way to do the same stitch. Down, making sure you're going through both layers, sliding the needle over, and then coming up on your mark. I'm going a little ways past the end of my damage again, just like I did at the beginning. And to tie a knot, I'm gonna grab a little bit of fabric, which will create a loop. And then just bring your needle through the loop. And that'll do a knot. I usually like doing it twice just to make sure it's not going anywhere. Bring the needle through the loop and then cut it off. This is what it looks like when it's been repaired. If you have access to a sewing machine, you can do a standard straight stitch instead of a hand stitch. A machine stitch will be a little more durable. After I finish, I like to add a little bit of fabric sealant to the damaged threads to keep them from unraveling and to prevent fraying. If you don't have access to the inside of the seam because it has a lining or is like a stuffed animal, you can do a slip stitch on the right side. Since we only have access to the outside of the seam, we're going to have to use a slip stitch in order to close this pop seam. I'm again using a contrasting thread color, but of course you wanna use a matching one, especially for this, because we really don't wanna see it. If you're doing something like a stuffed animal where it's more fur rather than the flat fabric that I'm using, it's a little bit more difficult so you're just gonna have to do the best you can, but at least with the fur, it'll kind of disguise the repair once you do it a lot better. You just make, need to make sure that if you do have a fur type material that you're trying to repair, that you're actually grabbing the fabric part and not just putting your needle through the little furs on the outside, otherwise your stitches are just gonna go through the hair or the fur and then come out later. So we'll start here on the end. I'm actually pulling apart so I can get access to the inside fabric and then coming out on the folded edge. That way my knot is going to be hidden on the inside. I'll come directly across and grab some fabric on the opposite side, again trying to stay on the edge. And again, if you're doing fur, you wanna grab the fabric, not the fur. And then if I gently pull it, you'll see it'll start to close. 
if you're using a matching thread color, then it's going to be less noticeable than my black. So now I'm going back to my first side, grabbing a little bit of the fabric, gently pull it close, and then come back to this bottom edge. Again, you want to make your stitches fairly close together and small, just because it'll make the repair better than if your stitches were bigger. And then gently pull it close. And you're just going to do this for the whole length of the way going back and forth between the two sides. I've gotten to the end, so I'm ready to tie my knot. This is why you would want to use a matching thread color because there's no way for me to hide my knot. So I'm just going to try and make it as small as possible. Grab a little bit of fabric in order to create that loop. Bring the needle through your loop and then pull it gently. And again, I just like doing it twice to make sure it's not going anywhere. Bring the needle through the loop and then cut it off. Regardless of damage to the seam, you can always repair it to give it extra life and it'll look as good as new. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of our new releases. Also check out ProfessorPinkCushion.com to view our complete library with well over 450 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can join our YouTube membership and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.